Hey guys, this is Alex Kirby with ThreadyPublishing.com here for another uh, interesting clinic talk. We've got Justin Taylor here uh, to talk to us about the Jet Sweep series and all the different things that you can do off of that. Uh, but before we get started, if you could do me two favors, if you could uh, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, that just helps us reach more coaches and get this stuff out there to a bigger audience. Um, so one other thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by ThrowDeepPublishing.com. And this week, actually, we have a six-part video series from Division II National Champion Sam Parker. He's the O-line coach and run game coordinator at Ferris State University. They just picked up the D2 uh, national championship trophy not too long ago and he's going to go through their whole run game play action shots all the rpo stuff i mean he, he really breaks it down for you as well as how they built that championship culture so it's a really great presentation you're going to find the link in the description below to that and you can also get 20 percent off your first order with promo code youtube 20. Uh, so coach taylor is going to talk to us about uh, like we said jet, the jet sweep series uh, but first, Coach, why don't you just uh, kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you're doing now. I appreciate it, Coach. Um, yeah, my name's Justin Taylor. As you can see um, uh, on the second – it's popping up. Second slide here, I kind of – I went to Cleveland County High School in Heflin, Alabama. Um, I was a three-year starter, played there. We had a pretty good run of uh, ball players. I kind of got my love for the game there. Uh, we played for a state championship, had a chance uh, my senior year to play for another one, but lost in the semis. We were number one team in the state. And so just being around that got me on a direction at an early age. That spring, my high school football coach let me coach the freshman the freshman D line in spring training as a senior in high school. So uh, I got my foot in the door quick. And then as I went to college at Jacksonville State, um, I went, I worked and I went and coached, volunteer coach there. The whole time I was in college, I volunteer coached. Um, actually, by the third year, I got to call the plays for the junior high for a couple of years as a you know, 20, 20, 20 year old kid. That was a, a great experience for me. Uh, then I went and did my student teaching at Oxford High School. And when I knew that I was going to get to go there, that's where I was going to be placed. I actually called ahead, and John Gross was the head coach there who went on to be the head coach at Jack State. And uh, their D line coach, was a guy named Todd Bates who played for played with me at Heflin, but he's now the uh, he's the D line coach and co coordinator at Oklahoma, and he was a, a good buddy of mine, and so I got to go over there and, and work uh, all three freshman sports, and then got graduated college, got married, uh, had two kids. Uh, life comes at you fast. I was actually uh, my son was in the hospital. I got my first job, moved my clothes and my bed the week before school started, went a week of school, went and got my son out of the hospital. He was a premature. So it was a it was a wild ride to start with. And my my wife's also a teacher, so she's in this in this education game with me. Then after that first year we had our second kid and decided to move back closer to home and uh spent all summer looking for a job and got to go to Cherokee County High School. Uh, they were two years removed from winning a state title, and their their uh, head coach Trip Curry had um, he had already played for three and won one here in Alabama, and uh, it was just a great opportunity to get to work with some great men. I go there first year, I get to be the D line coach. It's, it's a funny story. Our um, our defensive coordinator that year, Nathan Weehunt, he took a job in, in that spring. He took a job as a, as a head coach at another school. And so I'm thinking I'm just D-line coach. I called the JV uh, defense that one year, and I was all fired up thinking, hey, I got a shot to move up and be defense coordinator. And um, head coach walks in one day, and he said, uh, he said, I think um, I'm going to let so-and-so call the defense. And I just – I was I was like, oh, man. And then in the next sentence he goes, but I think I'm going to let you call the offense. <laughs> and I was like, coach, I don't even know what we run because I've been going to the defense all year. <laughs> Uh, and so took some learning, some growing pains. They had a good system in place. I, I, I won't take any credit. Everything I've got, I've stole or, or borrowed from somebody. I didn't reinvent. Um, he taught me their system, taught me what they did, uh, took it. And I, by year three or four, we were rolling pretty good. Um, we uh, 
won one or two games the first year, and then by the third year, I think we, we just missed the playoffs by the game. The next year, we went seven and five, got in playoffs, and then we had two years in a row where we made it to the quarterfinals. Um, had a good run run of athletes and uh, run. A lot of the film you see is from the '16 season, uh, where we went ten and three, and we're probably our quarterback broke his ankle in the game. And if he hadn't done that, I think we probably would have had a chance of playing for a state title that year. Um, but so I got there, and then that led to an opportunity to take my shot at being head coach. Uh, I was probably should have waited, probably should have jumped at another program and, and learned some other things before I did it. But I did it, got that experience. Uh, didn't go real well, but I was fortunate. After the second year, I got an opportunity to leave and come to Lincoln, Alabama, and uh, and help coach the O line. Actually, me and a, a buddy of mine, his name's Jamie Linderman, does the tackles and tight ends, and I did the center and guards. And we kind of worked there. Um, and so a lot of what you're about to see is stuff we did at center. So a lot of times I'll say we or we used to. Uh, we do some of this stuff here, but it's not the same offense. Uh, it's some good stuff. So I, I like to talk about what I know I'm sure of. Um, you know, I, I don't want to show anybody something that i am just walked into. And um, so we'll talk about the jet today. And um, – I call it the jet. Originally, we used to call it the fly, uh, but we started calling it jet because, I mean, that's whatever you jet motion. You hear that all the time in clinics and stuff like that. And I call it the jet because my son, uh, his name is Jet. And so uh, I just added two T's to remind um, Ronnie every day about why we do this. You know, my, son, my uh, oldest son. Uh, so I just threw his name on there, and he, he thinks it's pretty cool that on the call sheet it says Jet Sweep. <laughs> Even even now, I told our, our OC um, the other day I, about week five or six, I said, you ain't noticed that I changed the name yet, have you? And he goes, no, I didn't. And he goes, I told him why. I said, oh, that's cool. He said, yeah, love that. So he was fired up about it too. Um, so real quick, when, whenever we do this, this was the coolest thing that when I learned this offense from uh, Coach Curry and those guys at, at Cherokee County, they had been an – I team back in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, uh, and so when things started getting more spread and learning the spread, they really wanted to keep their mentality of in the eye, and so they just backed up into two back gun, and they we, he called it eye and the gun. So if you'll see um, two back gun, two side cars, people call it, and we would run sweep, which is really outside zone, wide zone. We would run ISO, and then we would run quarterback counter, or counters to all of these guys. And the beauty of it was you get all three guys the ball. Uh, all, three guy, all three guys in the backfield could run all three of those plays. Uh, and that was, um, you can see um, some of the clips I've showed you where our quarterback in 16 was a junior. He was so good. He's actually playing a little linebacker at Liberty right now. And he was phenomenal in this set because you could run everything through him and other people, and uh, I think he actually that year like threw for 2,100 and rushed for over 1,000 yards um, on our 2016 team. So if you'll see, we'll take the back, uh, wherever side he's on, uh, and it, you can do this different personnel, but the way it's designed is, is the left back always splits out to the left, and the right back would always split out to the right. Now, if you say this guy's like a true running back and this guy's more your hybrid, uh, you can do that too, but just the base way to do it is these two guys in the backfield are, are supposed to be kind of the same guy or at least close enough to do similar things, and that way you don't uh, – it's easier to call in tendencies and stuff. But we have had years where um, this guy was a better – just a, he's more of a fast fullback, and so we never moved him. We just have him flip sides and then let this guy flip and go out and be the slot if that makes sense. Um, so the first play we install in two back and in one back is the sweep, our outside zone. Um, carry over as many of those concepts from the two back as we can. And I, I, int I put this part in there because I want, I want people to know that our jet offense is not like a whole new, whole new thing. It is literally the same offense as two back. Uh, there's a few things you can't do. But for the most part, if you took the core plays, all you're doing is splitting this back out like right here. And then when you send him in motion, you got your sweep. Uh, you actually can still run quarterback ISO. 
Um, you got your counter to all these guys. You can run a quarterback counter. You can run a counter here. Some of our uh, compliments you'll see in a minute, we run some counter two, uh, like a, almost like a power read, but it's not really a read. He'll ride it and go. Um, we'll see some clips of that. All right, so I'm going to show you all um, some clips of, of us running it out of the two-pack set. Let me give it a second. All right, so you can see we've got our tight end. It's on the loop, but our tight end up top, he's in a nasty split. He can be either or. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the, the defense. But uh, So two back, we're stretching that thing, running that thing. Um, and you'll see in a second when we split this guy out and have him go full speed, um, it's really the same. It's really the same for us. We teach the same mechanics for everybody. Um, the handoff for the quarterback is almost the same. Now it'll vary. You'll see some clips on here because I mean I'm dealing with teenagers, and so some of them will do the handoff uh, perfect, and some of them will uh, open and just grab the ball. And a couple of kids we let do that because they're such a good athlete that that was the best way to do it. Now, uh, when I was at Weaver, we had some kids who were fast and they couldn't they couldn't take the handoff because they had never taken handoffs. They'd move from like receiver and things like that. So we did the toss like a lot of people do. We tossed it there. And um, let me see if I get it done. Did it go? There it goes. I got a little lag. All right, and you can see the tight end attached here, running the same thing. All right, it's just stretch or outside zone. Well, be careful. You want to say stretch and outside zone. Uh, the Alex Gibbs disciples will get you if you say that the wrong way. <laughs> uh, let me get this. All right, so the, let's talk about the exchange. Like I said, a little bit while I go, two options on the exchange. Uh, quarterback's going to try it, and when he gets a snap, he wants to get that guy who snapped the ball when that ball, when that runner is outside the tackle. And we train it, and we harp on them about going full speed because you'll see on film a lot of times they're not going full speed. But it's easier to get for that kid to work full speed, get our timing down, than if he slows up a little bit because he's not sure. It's still going to be faster than if you teach it to him at a slow pace, if that makes sense. Um, because every kid's different, but if you don't harp on them about being as fast as they can, uh, then uh, then you're going to have some problems. One thing we do is we tell them on their alignment, they don't have a set alignment. Now, for the most part, you'll see on here that they're just a slot, but we tell them to get as wide as you need to to get full speed. So they'll go out there and stack behind the X or the Z. They'll go out there and be outside of him. And to the other team, it's a whole different formation, but to us, it's not. I've literally just told him to align up where he wants to to make sure he can get full speed to the left, if that makes sense. Um, so quarterback tries to push the ball to the far elbow. Running back's going to bring his near arm up. Um, actually going to start teaching that a little bit different um, next time. It's still near arm up, but we're going to teach him to swing him to swing them over. That's something I learned from our offense coordinator here at Lincoln is um, it you teach the kids all the time about narrow arm up all that, but he runs a lot of he runs a lot of veer and midline from the gun. And he started teaching that swim. Uh, and it does the same thing. You're still getting the near arm up, but because you swim, you guarantee the kid gets it high enough. Because uh, that a lot of times that's a problem because if you don't get it high enough, that elbow hits. So he tells them to swim, swim and get the handoff. And it ends up being, because, uh, you know, the kids won't over, they won't go over the top, but they'll do it. And I've, I've watched it practice. You know, our kids will take that step, and instead of just making this small pocket, because that's what we've told them to do, they'll take that step, and they'll, they'll bring it over here. And it, it really opens up the handoff lane. I thought that was, I learned that this year from our OC, and that was really cool, uh, just to watch it in action, too, how much it, it makes them open their pocket if that makes sense um so we hand off we don't pre we pre-call it uh we don't read it we we haven't uh done that in the past um 
I don't know if I will because jet the jet guy's pace is so can be so different depending on the kids, and it's not like a, a normal option play where the the guy starts static and runs through where you can kind of pace it out. Um, and so we we pre-call that where he's going to hand it off or fake it. If he fakes it, he is told uh, to try to turn his back or turn his shoulders to the defense and to grab to grab his stomach or grab his hip. You can see here in a minute we had a couple guys. They didn't do a full turn, but they would almost grab down on their stomach when they came by on their fakes. And what that did is it made – if it gave us one step on that defense, we were all for it. Um, all right, number two option, of course, to toss it. If you've got a guy that you just have to get him the ball, he's one of your dudes, um, and he ain't never took a handoff in his life. He's probably in Little League. They probably tossed him the ball all the time. He goes out in the backyard, 707 and everywhere else, and gets balls tossed to him all the time. He don't take handoffs. So you can toss it to that guy. Um, and But on the fake, it's the same thing. Um, I don't change I don't change the fake just because you toss it to that one guy because when he still goes by uh, and if he turns and grabs his stomach, if you're from a linebacker's view, you'll see a quarterback and a running back right here, and you can't tell, especially if that running back grabs his stomach or whatever, and everybody's in the same field of view. So I think that, that helps out right there. All right, so looking at the defense, one of the questions Coach had asked us about the, the jet sweep is when we, when we look at the defense – to me, the biggest thing I always try to find out is how they're going to play at the tight end or your why. Uh, is is he going to – how they play him when he's up, when he's – you can see how – is he why off? A lot of people use that. Flex or nasty split three to four yards from the tackle or just a regular slot. How, how are they going to play that and kind of determine where I want him to line up for a week? And you'll see in a minute one of the first clips uh, on the jet – the our tight end lines up as a, as a nasty or a, a slot, and then it wasn't a shift. It was, hey, hey, line up in, and we called out the formation, and he went from a slot, and he come and put his hand down and, and went to a down tight end. And we were playing a team, this was 4 two, five, and they took their nickel or, or Sam, our star player there, and they walked him down and made him a nine technique. Well, the team we were playing was a, a 6A in Alabama, which is – there's seven A's, and we were a four A. So there's a big difference in how many kids they had and the type of athletes they had. And if our kid had to block that kid in space, he wouldn't never blocked him. And you'll see on film, he don't block him real well, but because he brought him down to the line of scrimmage in a nine technique, that the nickel had to use his hands, had to shoot his hands on our tight end to get off the block, and that gave us enough time with the jet to get by. And you'll see that in the first clip in a second. Um, how do they treat motion? That's a big deal. So are their linebackers flowing hard or does their secondary roll? Those are two of the most common things you'll see. Um, probably can add to that. Another one is just sending people off the edge. Uh, those are probably the three most common things I've seen. Either the linebackers flow with it and the secondary doesn't move or a lot of people will roll their secondary almost to a cover three look uh, if they're in a cover two look or a two, two high look. Um, we try to get in some unbalanced. Um, a lot of times, if you get unbalanced, uh, that helps out because you can sneak your X off the ball on one side, and they, it looks like doubles, but it's really not because your X is off the ball and he's fixing to go in motion. Um, when you get unbalanced, do they match our numbers? If they're not going to match the people we put over there, then we're going to keep running it. Um, if they do, then we're going to try to run weak. And you got to figure out what your best weak side run is. You'll see I'm, I'm a big counter tray guy, but we also have a, um, a, a guard route we call gut. Um, everybody calls it something different. Still ain't figured out what the universal term for it is. I think North Dakota State calls it power base. Uh, I've seen it called G-Rap. Um, I've served, some people call it G-Lead, but G-Lead to me is like, is like belly lead on the goal line like the Saints run. So – uh, you'll see some clips of it in a minute. All right, do they match my numbers but overplay their alignment to the outside? So if they match our numbers but they play outside to try to keep us from getting outside almost to box us in, um, if they do, we run the play inside of them. So we'll either run a counter inside or we'll run some kind of ISO inside. 
um, or we can we've taught our tight ends too and you can see this I don't know if I've got a clip of it but we'll, we'll run that guy out of the picture and, and we tell him hey this week the Jets gonna turn up a little early if that makes sense because if they're trying to box us in then we just take that guy and run him and we'll turn that thing up a little quicker like you would if you were in the backfield running a true outside a wide zone You can see on this first clip what I was talking about where uh, see our tight end, he lines up and is, is a nastier flex split. Uh, and that guy's four or five yards off of him. But as soon as we come down, now they have to come into the box. And you can see we didn't block him great. But because we reduced the space that our kid had to block in, that guy had to shoot his hands. And then by then it's too late with a full speed runner. I, I think – you know, people want to spread offenses because of space. Uh, I think tackling in space is the hardest thing to do. Blocking in space is the hardest thing to do. And I also think that changing the space to a high school kid uh, is a problem. And what I mean by that is if you've blocked out on a five technique all week and then on the snap of the ball, that kid stems back inside to a four eye and you ain't practiced that space changing on you, then I think you have a problem. I mean, it's just like quarterbacks. What what bothers the quarterback? Pressure in the pocket. You know why? Because the space that in his pot in the pocket that he's used to at practice, that he's worked that draw and throwing on rhythm and all that stuff, is changed in the middle of the game. And so that, that's under uh, under thought of. I think is changing the space for people. So uh, you can see, get tight end down. Oh, I didn't mean to go. Let me go back. All uh, right, next clip. Yeah, so now we start with a down tight end because we knew what they were going to do right here. Um, we actually, this game right here, it was uh, first, one of the first games. It was the first game of the year. A uh, whole bunch of starters. We thought we were going to be pretty good. And uh, this team actually whooped us pretty good, but – Later in the game, we made it a little closer than it should have been because we started running nothing but jet and counters off jet and good off jet, and it, it got, let us score a couple times, move the ball a little bit better than just being static. Um, one thing I didn't talk about, our play side back, we teach him. He's actually, he's actually got the first linebacker on the ball, like ISO, but he's going to take an outside path and now you'll see him block other people because if that guy goes away we'll take the next one but we teach him to read the block just like the running back so he's going to open he's going to run towards the ghost tight end or the tight end and he's got his eyes tracking this guy so right here you can see he's going to find that hole and insert he's going to read it just like the running back All right, so now you can see a flex tight end. You can see how they how they play it a little bit. Um, we knew that the this is a, a local team, big rivalry for our school. We play up the road, and we knew that they play the same 50 defense for as long as I can remember. Um, and we knew that when we gave them this flex, kind of how they would play it compared to a regular tight end. And we felt like if we got in that flex, we'd bring that guy down. And that would eliminate one more guy in space, and we could, oh, we could get out there a little bit better. All right, now compliments to the Jets and different things you can do. Um, so we always, like I said, we run our base offense, and then we try to run stuff off of those base plays like the same thing so if we run two back you now uh, i'll talk about some of these more than i will the others um really like the counter out of it and we really like throwing a quick game off the back side those are probably the two biggest things we did uh, we played around with some uh didn't do a good job of this i wish i'd added some more some play side wheel uh, or some vertical stuff to the play side 
we did some of the vertical stuff, but we didn't do it off off the jet as much. We did some where it's just like quarterback sweep, and then we'd throw it. But you know, here lately, I think um, a lot of teams are running that like glance pose wheel with the jet guy screaming to the flats. You know, almost a scissors look, scissors with a flat being the guy actual guy who had the ball, or um, Cheating your like we had that flex tight end, let that flex run a glance up the middle or a middle read, and then taking your lead back and run right down the seam on the four verticals concept off of it. Those are two things. If when I go back and run this again, those are those are probably the two answers to the play side. I'll probably try to get a vertical shot, like I said, either with that glance wheel or a four verticals with the back being the fourth vertical out of the backfield. Um, quarterback counter. Uh, we really liked it. We we would ride it some. We'd put a tight end on the backside and run it to a nub, an open side some. Uh, really like that. You say, well, coach, it's, it's a counter. It's supposed to go the other way, and you're not countering anything. But because they're flowing, linebackers are flowing so hard to get outside thinking we're running jet, they don't, they're not able to fit the counter anymore. So if you run – if you run the jet motion, linebackers are flying, and then you go and you block down with your tackle, and, you know, normally you kick out, and that end is, is used to spilling or whatever. Well, our boxing, whichever style he does, those linebackers who normally are here and they just fit downhill, well, because it's jet, they went out, and now they have to fit back inside. We've changed the space that they're used to. It's like I talked about earlier. Uh, that changed their space, and now they're having to fit and take on those blocks from a different place in a different angle than they practiced all week on it because they're too worried about the jet. Um, and then, of course, counter week, that's a that's a big one everybody does. And then G-Rap or the gut play. Our quick game, our now screens, you see see those. those are, the now screens are probably my favorite thing to throw in high school because every kid you got that has played basketball at one time wants to go one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Uh, and I saw it is. So you throw it out there, it's one-on-one -on -one or it's two-on-one -on -one with a blocker. You throw it out there, and he basically gets the basketball up and cross over and go. Um, you can throw the, the hitch, the slant. We'll throw a fade off the backside. Sometimes if we see that they roll, but the corner doesn't bail, so it's supposed to be a, a cover three look, he stays man backside, we'll throw the fade because he knows he's got no help. And then – uh, also, if they roll the safeties and they've already got all their alley players down in the box, you can throw the slant in behind them too. And then, of course, waggle. Um, the, the, the first RPO in the, in history, the waggle, uh, the good old run pass option of the waggle. So we'll run we'll run it. And uh, we've taught interesting about that. We've taught our backs two different things. Um, we try to get them when you normally run the waggle. You let if they're both in the backfield, if you're running waggle left, this back right here would step forward and then go run his flat route and then it cross. Well, when we run the jet, we try, we've done it both ways. We've done that and taught him to leave a little early and go. Or we've taught him to cross the quarterback's face since the jet guy's a yard in front. And that's something you got to figure out how you want to do. you got to get your back out. That's more important than the fate. The jet – and the kid running will take care of the fate. Getting that back out to the flat in a waggle concept to me is is the most important way to think about it. All right, but you can see backside out flow. All right, we're coming back. Get my next clip. Um, yeah, I think this is a, a another G G wrap. No, this is actually a, a counter. This is the counter right I was talking about. So you can see our back tack, backside tackle pull right here. This is actually a counter tray in a ride. Uh, Instead of counter it back to it, you can see them pulling. Um, you can see these guys look look at that angle that guy took. 
Um, you can kind of see it changes the space and how they take on those blocks. All right, here's one of our GT wheat right here. You can see this. Look at the fake by this kid. Look at the big arms overselling it. Uh, that was huge. He's a yard in front. Um, this kid right here was dynamite. He was about he's about five eight, five nine, and uh, he leg, he legit he run. He didn't go to camps and stuff, but I know hand time. He run a four four three times in a row, which I know that's hand time. And it's probably a little bit slower, but the fact that he run it three times in a row one day shows you how fast that kid was. He was the the only kid at that school. He played. He started as a sophomore. So he played three years, and he ended up with a thousand rushing yards, a thousand receiving yards, and a thousand return yards in total in his three years. He was such a versatile player. So you can see fake GT up in there. You can see what it does to linebackers. And get our next clip. It's all about changing those angles, changing everything when you run the jet. Um, just giving them something different to see right there. Little quarterback GT right here. Said it's not perfect, but it's getting positive yards because you've changed that you've changed the space that these people are working off of when you send that guy in motion. Even if they take one step, this guy rolls, and you, you see it just it looks like a big wad, but you can look how many yards we got on that play. All right, here's our waggle play right here. He ends up just running, but you, I want you to see, I mean, it's just your old school waggle. Guys in motion, this is your crosser. This is generally we write to run a fade or a, some kind of a bend flag um, or a K route, I think Doug Max calls it. And for clear out, get that guy in the flat, and this guy's on a post. Um, a lot of times we would our quarterback would just run it on, the, on this play, but you can see he's got a guy there. Crosser's got to do a better job of finding the middle, but um, I mean, this – Tubby Raymond to the T. I mean, it's one of the oldest school, oldest plays in football, and we've just dressed it up out of the spread with jet motion. All right, so this is kind of why some of this this guy right here. We really like to get him in space a lot. We've got a ton of clips of him catching these nail screens, different stuff. Um, and he was he was slick at it now. I mean, that's that's no blocking whatsoever. That if they're gonna give you a little space, or when you run the jet, if they roll safeties and this guy backs up into a softer cover three, then now you know that's when you come back and call that play where you can get that guy. Uh, especially if you've got a guy you just feel like is just tough in space. Uh, we talked about our slant right here. We said something about it earlier. You can see when this guy goes in motion, you saw that nickel, uh, that alley defender, bump closer to the box, which opens the window. Uh, you can actually – he's up there deep safety, but his deep safety actually starts stepping this way uh, and opens back up. Now he comes back in and tries to make a tackle. But the fact he took two or three steps towards the jet and they reduced on the back side as soon as we went in motion, opened up a huge window for your slant. And that, I mean, that's a play we run all the time. If we were in two back, we, we could do the same thing. Whether we were in two back or we're in jet motion, to us, it's the same play. You know, it would be the same as if that back started in the backfield and faked the, the sweep. All right, so this led us, and you can mix it up, send different people. If you don't want to have the same A or B running your jet, 
Um, you can change you can change up who's who's where. We went trips to the field here, and this is actually this is actually the running back. This guy is the one who's normally here, and we split him all the way out because we wanted him to get the ball, and we wanted everybody to run with this guy because uh, he got a lot of attention. And you can see if you look at this secondary when he goes in motion, how many people go with him? If you look up here, so that guy goes in motion. And they left left it right there, left the middle of the field. Um, and we stood out there and looked. At, we probably blocked the wrong guy, but look how many yards we got. Uh, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Make him turn his hips. All right, he turns his hip. The space that he's tackling on is different now, and he's going to get some yards. Make him turn his hips. Made him turn his hips. Got some good yards. And to me, that's like um, running the ISO on first down and getting four or five yards. We just did it without all without all the people in the box. Um, so th things like that. That was my favorite part about the Jet Series is that it's not a whole new offense. It is literally the same, almost the same stuff we did two back. You just had to tweak it just a little bit because you got a guy in motion. Uh, but that was that was so so good for us because it was day one install. You know, run the sweep. All right, now day two, split the guy out, run it again, um, and then go from there. So we went when we uh, normally we just do it when we do the the indie, or you do your indie, or you do your running backs tracks period. Normally, we did it then, but um, probably that year, or it may have been the next year, we thought we were going to do it more. And we actually put a period in where um, we had didn't even have the quarterbacks over there, and so we were snapping to they were snapping um, to each other. So we took them over there, and we had like one running back on a knee with the, the ball and snapping, and then the other running back and receiver that we thought might run it, and they were just catching. They weren't handing it off. Um, they were catching it and then sticking it out. And so we got more reps out of it while we got to do other things. So we just kind of had a little three-man rotation. Um, or if you let the coach be the quarterback. So we'd take and um, snap to the coach every time. Everybody runs jet. A whole line of guys just running jet, running jet. And then they stay over there. So if they run it right, they stay on the right side of the field. And then me and whoever snapping would move over just a little bit and said, all right, now let's run it this way. And we could get a ton of reps in just like five minutes, a little quick period doing that. Uh, and then we'd, we could throw that in any time. I mean, that's, sometimes that could be a warm-up because they're sprinting, you know, after they break down and they're, they're sprinting and stuff like that. Um, that was the way we snuck in, snuck in reps on the timing of that. Uh, and then we would do it. We'd have a – just like outside wide zone guys, people have a – I won't say it's an inside period, but it's like a, a – a nothing but zone, 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 so their backs can see it. We would do that. There were days where we would block off 10 minutes, and it's really not team. It is zone, move the ball up five yards. It was jet, 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 and we would work. And we would try to get as many reps in as possible because uh, you got to see the cut. Uh, most of the time you saw they were getting outside, but you got to get a feel for it. And just in case we've got to run that nine technique up field, because um, it could cut, it could cut anywhere out there. It could cut early, just depending on what the defense does. So that, that's kind of the way. So mix it in with your tracks. Uh, you can do a, a period where you get a punt of reps, like I talked about, and then it's a must, just like a wide zone team would do, where you got a period where you run it back to back to back, so they get a feel for it. Now your your line don't like it. <laughs> They get tired of running over and over, and you know, because then it's like move the ball up five, run again, move the ball up five, run again, and you try to get as many reps in as possible with different runners. Yeah, I was. Yeah, so I was. I was. I was trying to show it. Where so if you're taking this, you see me. All right. So if you're taking this, if I'm coming to take this handoff, and quarterback's here, our guy taught this. 
Because normally you teach this, but that's so robotic. You know, a lot of times the guys just do this. And so our, uh, our OC there had taught it this way for years, and he was telling me, and I tell them to swim it. So as they're coming to get the handoff, they'll take that big swim, and it's never this high. But when you demonstrate, you over-exaggerate, and it makes them get basically what you actually want, which is, you know, all the way up here to the chin, that big pocket. And it's really cool watching them do it. Uh, and that was, like I said, I steal what you can. That's what our uh, OC does that here at Lincoln, and I thought that was really cool. I would probably say, you know, it goes back to it go back to players. I mean, that sounds sounds rhetorical, but so one year we didn't we weren't as good a team, and we had teams that would zero us up and put everybody in the box so they could add a defender where uh, they thought we were going to run that jet, and it took us a series or two sometimes to figure out that or I tell you what if it's a, a four or four I who's really 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 good can take up two blockers because you're trying to reach and you're trying to really you really you want if you're real good you really want your guard to take that four I and your tackle climb um, that's like best case scenario what happens most of the time is you get the four reach and then the guard works through and gets on and cuts the backer off but when we faced teams that had a guy that was so good and both these guys had to stay on it, the linebackers would shoot or the linebackers would be able to flow over the top. Uh, and that and that's where you got to come back to some of those uh, complimentary plays. you got to find a way. So um, I would say when you get a team that's got a strong, odd, probably odd front, I don't, I don't think the even is – but if you've got three dudes in the middle, they can stop you because all your, a lot of your counters – we're back inside, whether it was counter tray or the gut play. And if they've got three dudes that can basically stop those two runs and everybody else can worry about the jet or they got good cover, uh, so you, so you run into that. And I think when we've seen that, um, we, you got to get some unbalance. I think that's the answer to that. If they're that good inside, um, then you can't be generic. you got to get some unbalanced. Uh, maybe go to tackle over uh, and then put your X off the ball and let him go it, uh, some things like that. Or uh, I know for one of our – I tell you, one of our two-point plays one year, we got uh, – so we went quads. We went tight end, with tight end right, and then we had three receivers. I'm going to draw this up. Uh, see if you can, you can see that right there. All right, so you see that right there, and because they were so worried about our jet motion, they didn't think we don't really have a – it's not a formation to run jet. So we sent one of those slot receivers in motion on the jet, and then we just run – where he came from, we just run quarterback sweep as a, as a complement play. So once we, we got an unbalanced and then we – they manned up, we sent that guy in motion, and they lost a fitter. Um, so we changed the appearance. We changed the space. And if you look at it, there's really no way I could have run jet out of this because I don't have a blocker. I don't have a two people weak side. But that doesn't stop a 15-year-old kid going, oh, jet, 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 and freaking out. And then, and so stuff like that, I think that's the biggest thing with a jet is it changes the appearance, changes the space that people have to work in that you're not used to working in. You know, it's funny you say that because I, I think it was the last one of these that, I recorded a couple of days ago with uh, with Coach Basucci talking about the buck sweep stuff that, that, that he runs. He he said that same thing. He go, I don't have to outsmart the other coach on on the other sideline. I just got to outsmart that kid who's on the field. So you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, when you look at it on paper, you can't run yet, but they don't necessarily know that, you know. So it's that's it yeah. works. Yeah, I mean that's you know they'll say the clinic the last guy with the pen wins, but. Uh, they don't let that kid have a pen on the feet. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's hard. So you got to try to trick him. Yeah, exactly. Well, Coach, this was uh, 
This is really interesting. Why don't you, uh, can you tell us where people can uh, find you on social media or any other any other place you want to promote before we get off here? Yeah, so you can uh, you can see me. At, uh, you've tagged me on Twitter as Coach Taylor underscore four. The four for I've actually got four kids now. I've got uh, took in my niece and nephew about five or six years ago, and so we've got four kids. Um, you can find me there. Uh, hit me up. I love talking ball. I love learning. Um, you can also, my wife has started a couple years ago um, when I began head coach making some graphics and it's branched out. She's got a side business. It's a game day graphics, at game day graphics too, I think. Uh, she does, if you like the slide background that I had today, she helped me design, put those up and some things like that. And she does schedules. So she's, she's real good with that. And um, I'm hoping uh, after doing this, I'm hoping to, to start putting some of this stuff together, uh, following in the likes of, of you and Cody A and some of the other people who are writing blogs and turn them into books. I'm hoping to put some of our the stuff I've learned down. Um, you know, I, I I'm not the I'm not the greatest coach, but I like football and I like talking about it. So if I can put my thoughts together and put it out there and somebody gets something out of it and you know and maybe put together some coach two course or something. So not to make money and be rich, but to make a little money so I can buy some of this stuff that y'all put out there. Because uh, y'all, between uh, y'all's website and some coach tube stuff and different things, man, there's some good stuff out there to learn. It's, it's probably one of the best times to be a, a coach right now because there's, if you want to learn, you can. Like, it, it's crazy how much you can, if I want, I've spent a week, I've got, one, I think last summer, I decided I want to go in, learn Steve Sarkees and stuff. I found two or three clinics. I found some Alabama tape, and I just made a Google Doc full of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then a couple years ago, uh, I may have been before that. I did Matt Drinkle, who's at Army, yeah, does tight ends coach when he was at uh, I think Kentucky Westland, and they scored fifty points a game. And I found his coach tube course. I found another course. I found some articles. Uh, he did a, a clinic during the pandemic, and I put all those in a Google Doc, and it's. It's crazy how much you can learn now if you want to, because it's all out there. Yeah, that's that's interesting because you know the whole how this started. For those who don't know, how this started between you and I was you actually contributed to a Jet Sweep article that we put together on the site, and I'm going to put that in the link uh, in the description below as well because that's kind of why I reached out because I was like, hey, I, I like the stuff that you sent in, uh, so I'd love to hear you talk more about this. But yeah, I mean that's it's really cool because I. I did the same thing. I just kind of sent a question out to a bunch of people and got a lot of really good, interesting information, some film clips. So that's going to be down there in the description as well, that Jet Sweep article. I think we had over 20 different coaches send in answers and diagrams and video, and you were one of them. Uh, but, yeah, this has been great, Coach. So I appreciate you taking the time and, and talking about what you what you guys do. And um, so uh, – like I said, you know, this is brought to you by 3D Publishing. So we're going to put the uh, uh, link to the description in the description below all the stuff we talked about. And also, uh, if you could just like and subscribe, if you haven't already, uh, we would really appreciate that. But uh, Coach Justin Taylor, we appreciate you coming on. And uh, we will see you guys in the next video.